QuickBooks Online 2021 Recurring Transactions Invoice Form Part 2. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2021. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online practice file. In prior presentations, we entered recurring transactions related to invoices. Now we're going back in to see what the impact will be after time has passed with relation to those recurring transactions. We do have a reminder or a tasks item popping up in the middle of the page here that says respond to your recurring template reminders view reminders this is useful and if you go onto that you'll go into the reminders although it's right in your face right in the middle of a page is not that blatant to me considering the fact however that i don't usually use this middle of the page a lot of the time when i'm working in quickbooks i'm always working over here on the left hand side or in the cog up top and therefore, if you're using these recurring transactions, I would recommend always going to the cog. You know, basically every time you go in, just have a routine and see what is in there in the reminders. But if you go into the reminders field here, then you're going to go into the reminders. Remember to undo uh, any kind of uh, any any filtering you did before. If you're still working from the prior presentation, you can unfilter the items. We do have some items in here that probably you haven't input yet because they're related to other kind of transactions, but we're focusing in on the invoice at this point in time. And, and again, I would normally go into this by always going to the cog up top and then go into the lists and then the recurring transactions. And then once again, I'm going to unfilter these items because I filtered them last time. You can unfilter them by hitting the little X right there, or you can go to the filters and then go to all. So here's all the transactions. You will once again have more here, or I will have more than you may have. We're focusing in on the invoices however which you could sort by hitting this thing up top and then the ones that are the reminders the reminders of course are going to be in the reminder area these are the ones you got to actually take action on whereas if you go back to the recurring transactions these are simply the recurring transactions that are the things that are generating something that you may need to take action on or or that are going to be recorded automatically depending on the settings so I'm going to close this back up then. We're focusing in on the invoices. So I'm going to filter it by the invoice. Going to hit the drop down up top. Hit this item. Uh, I'm sorry, hitting the second one. And we want to go to the invoice. So we're going to sort by the transaction type of invoice. Apply that out. So here's our two invoices that we entered. We entered one as a reminder, one as scheduled. So one of them, we said, hey, here's the invoice. We think it's going to happen periodically. We would like you to remind us before you actually create the invoice and then we'll go ahead and finalize the invoice and then you can send it out at that point or if you think if you're confident that it's going to be the same each period and you have a reoccurring invoice that you're sending out we could say just schedule the invoice and send it out automatically this second one then has already been recorded it's going to just record what happens increasing the income increase in the accounts receivable automatically this first one then is going to generate something over here in the reminders field so if we go to the reminders and then i select the all button i'm going to focus in once again on the invoice so we got these two invoices because I, I said do it every day so this is the one for today and this is the one that is it's giving me a day early reminder for the next day for tomorrow so if i then go back back on over here's our transactions Let's then open up our reports, balance sheet and income statement. I'm going to do that by going to the tab up top, right clicking on it, duplicate that tab. I'm going to do that again, go to the tab up top, right click on it, duplicate that tab. We're then going to be opening up the balance sheet and the P&L, the profit and loss, the income statement. We'll go down to the reports on the left hand side. We're going to open up that good old P&L report. The P and the L. Dates look good. I'm going to close it up. I'm going to hold control, scroll up just a bit to that 125. Let's go to the tab to the left now. Go back on down to the reports. We are then going to be opening up the BS balance sheet report. Close up the hamburger. Here's what we got on the balance sheet. Now it's an invoice. So the ones that were generated automatically by just being scheduled will be here on the 10,900. We have the invoice that was created on 221. There's the invoice, obviously increasing the accounts receivable. It was recorded automatically. And if we wanted it to email out automatically, then it could send the email out automatically to the customer or client. Then the other side is going to be going to the next tab on the income statement under the sales item. So under sales, we got this invoice that was sent out automatically. So scrolling back up and going back. Now, obviously those are not affecting cash. So we're not going to be double checking that necessarily by it clearing 
the the checking account for the invoice but if we send the invoice out to the client then of course that's going to be one verification we'll also see this on the customer information so if i if i look at the receivables by customer it'll show that they owe us money obviously if it's wrong the customer will probably tell us that there's a problem and then if we receive the payment from the customer we could then either record the receive payment at that point in time decrease in the accounts receivable recording the payment into either checking or undeposited funds or if we're getting some kind of electronic transfer payment from the client automatically we may wait till it clears the bank account and then we can match it out possibly against the invoice recording in essence the receive payment with the help and use of the bank feeds so that's one one item we have if i go back to the left hand side then the other if we go if we're back in the reminders i'm going to go back to the reminders which is going to be the scheduled one and if we go into the reminder list then we have let's do this one and say now we just want to create that one let's say that one we're saying yep that looks good let's go ahead and send it out and create it if there were batches we can select them and do the batch action and create it or we can uh, record it here so i'm going to say let's go ahead and record it so i'm going to say create that item and then we could check it out if we go back to the balance sheet then and i refresh this making it freshen it up and then we go into the accounts receivable that one should now have been populated as well so now we got these two invoices on 221. so i'm going to go back to the balance sheet looks like that has been recorded as been expected let's go back to the first one now note that you could have a situation where you're saying hey i, I want you to remind me and maybe i'll then go in and adjust it as needed so in that case we might have a reminder and say hey i'd like to kind of adjust it before sending it out for example you could adjust it a couple different ways you, you could adjust it here or you could adjust the template, meaning I could go back to the template and make the adjustment in the template and that will adjust future transactions. Or I could say, hey, look, the template is fine. I know the accounts that are gonna be used in the invoice, but I might have to go in there and, and adjust the quantity or the amount. So in that case, once it gets to the reminders area, you might say, okay, now I want, it, I want to go ahead and, and edit uh, this item here. So we're gonna go in and edit it and so there we have it and i might say okay I, I need to change the quantity let's say to six this time and it could be a more complex transaction you can imagine where you have a whole list of products and services that you just need to tweak a little bit periodically and then you could save it and then make those adjustments you know on a periodic basis and that might save time so then we can go ahead and save it and close it i'm going to save it and close it and now we've now we've made that adjustment for it and we recorded it so in other words, it's still here, but if I go to the, my, if I go to my financials and I check out my accounts receivable, that one was recorded on the 22nd, the 22nd, and I run that, I've got it down here at the 600. So here's the 600. I believe that was the one that we just made the adjustment to. So we've got that recorded then, then down here. So if I go back up and go back, if you use that method, then if I go back to the first tab, now I've got this one that's still kind of there, but I made an adjustment to it and recorded it with that adjustment. So this item then, I would say I want to not record it. I want to skip basically this item because I used that item in order to, to do the transaction I wanted to record already. And that should bring it back down back down to zero items in there. Should be so, and, and sometimes you have to refresh the screen. So if you go back on over here and then you go back to the reminders, sometimes that'll help you to refresh the screen if you have problems with that. So back back then uh, to the first tab. So those are those are the two kind of methods. Obviously, again, we can go in here and we can adjust these if we so choose, like the reminder item here. If I was to edit it here on this transaction or on this screen, now I'm editing the reminder itself. And if I was to make this something different, like say I made this one seven and I save the template and say yes, that doesn't record a transaction. That just adjusts it here so that the next item that's going to be recorded on the reminders lists that will come up uh, on the next day on the 23rd now then that will be using the new amount here so you got to be careful on which ones you're editing do you want to edit the template once it gets into the reminder item do i want to edit it there before i i accept it and if i need to edit it make sure that you're recording the thing that you want to record and then and then removing the reminder in, a, in the proper format once you get used to that it should be fairly straightforward but could take a little while to, to kind of figure out the different things that are that are happening here with regards to the reminder the scheduled items and then go into the reminder list and whether or not you want to adjust it 
how to adjust it, record the invoice as a po and then and then make sure that you're not recording it twice and things like that. 